what's up guys it's mcnulty here welcome back to the channel i hope you guys are all doing well and it is again time for the war of three kingdoms one of my favorite events in the game so i'm looking forward to it and i've been assigned again to the mighty ranks of the Shu kingdom um so hopefully Shu are going to bring it home this time um, and hopefully our teams are going to use all of their flags. Obviously, that's something that we really want. Um, but that is not the reason why we're doing a video today. The reason we are making a video is that we have a brand new hero in the portal. And he is another minion summoner. So that means he is going to benefit from the all-important unstoppable minion passive, which has been making heroes like Diochan and heroes like this dude, Cow Cow, some of the best defensive heroes in the game. Um, so we have Sun Quan who is featured with a costume. It looks like he's managed to lose that obviously horrible beard. Um, and he's gone for a clean cut, clean shaven costume with some awesome looking um, shoulder pads. I must say those shoulder pads look like they'd be very difficult to dress up in in the morning. Uh, but that aside... Um, he does look really cool. Honestly, I'm I'm pretty stoked about this one because I think he is going to be another decent hero. We did have, um, who was it who was recently featured? Um, not Zhuge Lang. Zhuge Lang's actually been really good. Uh, we had um, this dude, Guan Yu, who obviously isn't a minion summoner, but he does have some viable counters against the other War of Three Kingdoms heroes because he goes through minions. Um, and then we also had Zhang Fei. And Zhang Fei was a little bit of a letdown because, of course, he doesn't have any minions on him. Um, so let us get into it then. So Sun Quan, um, he is, of course, a fire hero. Um, he is the king of fire, shall we say. He's one of the sort of more like important Three Kingdoms heroes, as far as I know from the lore and things like that. Um, but at any rate, um, he is a fire hero, so he has had a bit of a switch around in terms of the class. He was a ranger, so he had a chance to bypass. He is now a rogue, and I do like the rogue talent for him, especially because these heroes are super good on defense, giving him that extra 25% uh, chance to, or 20% chance to dodge special skill damage is always going to come in handy. So I like the switch over in the talent. As far as the family bonus for the kingdom family, um, it's from one hero to three heroes, and they get anywhere from two to six percent mana every time a minion is summoned for the hero, and three to five percent heal um, every time a minion is summoned for the hero. So again, that makes them a little bit more difficult to deal with, and I do like the mana bonus. So you can really work with that, because as soon as they summon a minion, they're putting on that extra mana. If you have multiple heroes in the team, they can get anywhere up to a six percent um, boost in their mana every time they summon a hero and that can be enough to charge the hero up to where they're ready to fire again now the costume bonus is big it's been increased for the war of three kingdoms heroes so they get an attack bonus of 35 percent defense of 35 percent a health bonus of 45 percent and then that all important five percent mana bonus increase so you can see if we switch off the max power they're running a team power now of 1110 which is as good as any of the most recent heroes that have been released into the game so that's super duper good in terms of him specifically we are looking at an attacking hero so we want to see a higher attack stat you can see he's running 1125 attack 1020 on defense some might say a little bit squishy but that's absolutely fine and then 2185 on the health so really decent stats if you do go for the second limit breaks you're going to be looking at the Alpha uh, alpha Ether Talent, sorry, um, which is going to be the attack up. So at the start of the battle, he's going to get an additional 20% on his attack for six turns. And then he's going to be looking at, I mean, some pretty bonkers stats there. So the damage he's doing is going to be pretty brutal. And then last but not least, we cannot forget about the passive. So resistance against minion removable. <laughs> What am I doing? <laughs> Resistance against minion removal. He cannot be prevented from receiving his minions and his minion attacks and abilities cannot be disabled. Now with this guy, he does of course get the minions which give fire, 
The fact that they can't be disabled, I wonder if that would apply to say somebody like the gargoyles. So if you had two gargoyles, I think one gargoyle you resist poison, two gargoyles you resist poison and burn. So if you had two gargoyles, would it then be to the point where they cannot resist the burn damage? I don't think so. So I think we may need to rethink the wording on this passive, but just the main thing you need to go know is that you cannot just remove this guy's minions with heroes like Hojima or uh, anybody that just wipes minions off the, the opposition team. I was thinking of Grimble, you know, Gormek, anyone that removes minions, you cannot use them against the War of Three Kingdoms heroes because they have an unstoppable minion passive. And of course, they can't be prevented from getting the minions either. So in terms of what he's doing, let's get on to the special skill. So the old special was Command to Advance. It's now called Order to Advance. Um, and he was dealing 340% damage to the target nearby. He's now dealing 330% damage to the target nearby. As far as the stats are concerned, if you look at the old one, there is a bit of a decrease in terms of the attack stats. So that damage is going to be very, very similar. I do prefer, kind of prefer the attack up for him because he, you just want him to deal a little bit of extra damage because he is a hitter first and foremost. Um, so, so far the costume's better. He used to summon a Wu Soldier minion for every ally with 10% HP and 18% attack inherited from the caster. So a pretty flimsy min minion, 18% um, attack is not that great either. Um, and then the target that was hit by the soldier minion would receive 516 burn damage over three turns. Now this is with the max power preview on. Without it, it was 348 burn damage over three turns, which at the time I'm sure was a pretty decent amount. But unfortunately, times have changed. So it's not that great anymore. Now, in terms of the new costume, we're getting the 330% damage. He's now summoning a Wu Soldier minion with 15% HP. So an extra 5% on the HP and 30% attack. So an extra 12% on the attack. And then the target hit by the Wu Soldier minion receives 441 burn damage over three turns. With limit breaks and emblems, you'll be able to get that up to 648 burn damage over three turns. That's a pretty decent amount of burn damage now. So 200 per turn and the minions cannot be removed. It lasts for three turns and that resets every single time that the minion hits. So remember he's given himself extra mana generation when he's summoning these minions. So he's gonna be able to get round to them faster. The only downside with this guy is unfortunately the minions are just not as beefy as they need to be. So with 15% HP, Let's take his HP, so 3,019 HP at the maximum. So 15% of that is what? 450, let's say 450 to 460 HP. That's what the minion's gonna have. Now with a single hit from a pretty sort of average hit three hero, you should be doing more than 450 to 460 damage, which means you're gonna be able to get rid of the minions. Problem is that the minions are summoned for everybody for the entire team. But like I said before, if you have a hit all hero or at least a hit three hero, you're going to be able to deal with at least the majority of the minions that are on the board with one shot. Then if you also have anybody with a new passive that's been released, so someone from the Styx family, for example, you will be able to reduce the minion health again by another 50%. So there are some pretty decent counters for this guy. But that being said, as far as an attacking hero, I think this guy will be awesome. So I would definitely take him as part of a red team. You've got so many different options for defense down, elemental defense down, fast dispels. If you picked up Blossom recently, or if you've got Ray, for example, give both of them at the same time and then just run them down uh, with Sun Quan because that burn damage can rank up. So... This guy's not the greatest of all heroes, but I do think that he's definitely got some potential. He is obviously featured alongside Cow Cow and alongside Diachan, so he's got some stiff competition. And uh, sorry to be a downer here, but I just don't think that he stacks up in terms of what he's doing. If I got this guy, or if you're lucky enough to get this guy, I would definitely max him in a heartbeat. He's still going to be a really fun hero to play with. He's still got the stats he's got all of those 
cool things that you get with the unstoppable minion passive etc but he's just not quite in the same realm as the other two with that all said i am looking forward to this dude's costume and i think a lot of people are looking forward to his costume but of course it's not featured yet um, so if you do go ahead and drop some pulls in this portal, which I'm sure a lot of people will do, I wish you guys everything and the best, but in all honesty, I hope that you guys grab Cow Cow or Diachan <laughs> if you don't already have them, because I'm sure that's probably what you'll be going for. So do let me know in the thought, in the comments what you guys think about Sun Quan. Drop us a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, share it with your mother, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now, guys. Thank you.